morning, everyone. How are we doing? Yeah. Ah. Great to see you all at the 10th anniversary fan fest for EVE Online, the ninth fan fest in itself. So you all have a reason to come back next year for the 10th fan fest. And then, of course, the year after to celebrate the first year in the new decade. <laughs> there is always a reason to be back. My name is uh, A.O. Oliver Goodmanson, known as uh, Dr. A.O.G. I have the title of Chief uh, Economist for EVE Online and CCP, as well as being Director for Research and Statistics, where we have a team of analysts that do nothing but study you. And we know a lot about you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have a decade to review, and a decade takes a long time. So I'm going to try to go over this relatively fast, and let's see how I do on my timing schedule. Does anyone remember this? <laughs> the first one. So what has happened since, and how do we actually describe a decade where you got massive, massive amounts of data, you have hundreds of thousands of people that have touched this game during the time. It's actually in the millions. There are few ships been destroyed. A little bit more has been produced. So how do you describe all of that? What, what's the essence of EVE? Kripa. Wellspar, Tritanium. There is nothing that describes EVE as well as Tritanium. Why? Because it's the essence of all. It's the oil of, uh, of EVE Online. So if we just look at this uh, line that shows us uh, average uh, monthly uh, prices and uh, quantities traded on the, on the market, and we just walk through it, it's the beginning. This is from October 2003, when we opened up uh, an increment in the decimal for trade in Tritanium, and prices started to move right after that. From the beginning, because even with a, only a population of 30,000, even at that point in time, the market started to function for this particular product, independent of EVE Online operators, CCP, us. So from the beginning, you've been in control. Well, almost. <laughs> we sometimes do stuff. And uh, one of the uh, greatest uh, expansion in the beginning was Cold War. That brought in a lot of new uh, stuff, among other things, freighters. Is there an industrial pilot in here? Yeah. Any, anyone flown a, fre uh, flown a freighter? Come on. Yeah, okay. Just check in if it's the right crowd. And uh, that just uh, caused a disruption on the market. Uh, Tritanium started to uh, flow, and uh, we saw prices decline even though quantities were increasing. Then we entered the second phase, where we had steady growth of Tritanium traded on the market and steady increases in prices at the same time, looking over the long run. Of course, there are price fluctuations in that period. Now, that might seem strange that it's growing like this throughout the entire time, but of course, this follows the growth of EVE Online itself. So we can say that's the area of coming of age. By 2009, we are over uh, 200,000 subscribers and aiming for 300,000. And then there came a downturn. But why is there a downturn in price when everything is going well? This is in 2009, 2010, and into 2011. Okay. 
Say again? Yeah, I can't hear you. Are you, are you shy? Orca? One thing. Other things? Bots. No, there are no bots. Insurance takers. Insurance takers. We can all put it this way. There's quite a few of systems, independently operated or not, that uh, increase the amount of, uh, of titanium available and causing a downturn on prices. I'm not saying it's a bot, not at all, but I'm saying that everything has an impact. And in general, it's the adjustment and Tech 3 uh, technology coming in because it had a considerable impact on the usage of battleships. And in terms of production of battleships, there's a lot of titanium going into that. At the same time as supply was steady or increasing, so demand was actually declining for titanium, at the same time as the system was providing more than enough. And then, in August of uh, last year, we saw, saw the new mining era come, come into place, where people were able to specialize their mining, going on bigger uh, operations and so on. And yes, I skipped this period. Why would I skip this period? Well, let's look more closely. So this is basically zooming out into that particular period, 2011, 12, and 13. This is relatively stable. Everything is good. And then prices start to increase, and yet quantity does not start to increase. So if economics would work, higher prices would lead to more mining. It would lead to uh, people going and changing their profession to make more money. Because notice the prices uh, on the average is going from just about three uh, up to more than six ISK per unit. So has the market failed? Is there a shift in demand there? What's going on? Is it Holger Gittin? Causing a bottleneck on supply at the same time as we were growing quite rapidly and the economy itself needed to grow. Well, Helga Ketten was definitely active in April, May, some say into June. Is there an ongoing, ongoing right now? We haven't seen it very active, but it's always there, right? Is it bot banning? Our security team was able to come up with new methods and able to take them out on a regular basis. Or was it something else? Drone feature, changes in the balancing, changes in the supply, indeed. And then we see uh, quantity increase again when we see the new mining, uh, yeah, I want to say the new mining industry form, and prices started to decline again. So throughout the period of 2012, we can say it was a period of adjustment. But the very fact that even us that have all the data, it is difficult to determine and pinpoint exactly what it is, simply means that we need more brain power. We need more of you to be studying this data. More on that later. Let's jump a little bit more into uh, mineral prices. So these are all uh, eight basic uh, minerals put into one index. There's a lot of talk about inflation in EVE. Well, from 2004, and until 2010, early 2011, uh, mineral prices decreased by 40%. Sure, they took a jump during these uh, transitional changes uh, in the market when we took away a saloting and uh, changed the looting, etc. But prices are still just about the same level that they were back in the days. In fact, it's only a 0.2% inflation per month if you look at it as an average number. Look at the battleships. This is the price index for the battleships. All uh, tiered battleships. No special functions. And look at the mineral price index. No, I did not screw this up. It's not the same line. 
But why does it fall together? So there is 98% correlation. Well, that's simply the composition of the battleship. Minerals that go in it are basically all uh, basic minerals that are used to, be, to produce it. So the battleship becomes the best index for mineral prices. But it also shows that you guys are quite efficient. And prices are determined by supply because you guys are so quick to adjust to any price changes on the mineral market. It's a really, really efficient market. Let's look at the main price indices. Here we have split them up from mineral prices, the light brown line, to consumer price index, that is a little bit uh, darker orange, uh, yellow line. And as you can see, if we use 2007 as the uh, indexing point, where everything is set at 100, prices before and after that period are quite different. In the early years, from 2004 until 2007, uh, the markets, they were adjusting. Any change could have a significant impact. There was also the introduction of various different features, such as moon mining and tech uh, technology. Then counter that with invention. We have planetary interaction, where it changed the supply of secondary, producer, secondary products, products that are used to produce other items. And the loot changes. So all of these balancing, rebuilding, have had an impact over time. But because the system works, it is quite efficient in adjusting to this new information. This is the best proof that the EVE online market is a truly efficient and functioning market, able to react to changes almost instantaneously. And you cannot believe how happy I am to be able to show, say and show that instantaneous changes do exist in economics. Because as a teacher, I've been trying to tell students that for 15 years, and they didn't believe me. Now I have the proof. Thank you, guys. You have proven, proven it to be correct. But if we put a line there, which is, would, would be the stable prices, you can see that the price level after 2007, it's actually quite lower than before. So why do people talk about inflation so much? Well, sorry to say it, but just like voters, you have very short memories. You, of course, just look at what's happening last week, last month. And there can be significant price changes during that time period. Let's look at some uh, examples. The yellow one is the consumer price index, same ye yellow line as we have in here. And uh, we have put three ships in there, the Rifter, the Tanko, and the Aris. The Rifter has increased in popularity, so even if it is a Tech 1 uh, uh, item, that should reflect its prices in the minerals that are put into, into it, it is still being sold at the higher prices and changes in a different price pattern than other goods on the market. Their demand is in place. One of the most popular frigates to use in all kinds of operations uh, over the EV universe creates its own specific price pattern. So a person that's just thinking about buying another rifter might actually see it as a quite inflationary economy. Then there's the question about, you know, money doesn't get me anything anymore. Back in 2003, October, this was a big ship. And with uh, decent fit, it cost you 100 million isk. Do you want to guess what you can get for 100 million a day? Yes, Amar, you need, <coughs> you need to operate the damn thing. A hurricane. Even tech 2 fitted hurricane. 
with dancers. <laughs> Progression. Indeed, going from tech one to tech two, same prices. Another indicator of an efficient economy that is able to give you guys more stuff, better stuff, as time evolves. Think about your computers. Think about the computer you bought back in 1995. How much did it cost you? Give me a rough number, quick. $2,000. What does a good computer cost today? 2000 You wouldn't buy anything but the top end of the line gaming computer, would you? So basically, you would be willing to spend the same amount of money, but you're just getting a better computer today than you got back in 1985. Same for Eve. So, technological change gives you more than in the past, which allows you to work harder, earn more money, so can you buy more things, and just do it all over again. So you thought you were escaping the rat race? Oh no, it's doubly so in Eve. Let's look at the Rifter again. Here you see that uh, the Rifter has increased uh, in prices by 69% over the period. But who doesn't like Rifters? Even Lego does. Would you buy one? Yes. Just checking. Tech 3, strategic cruisers. Who bought one for a billion? Poor you. <laughs> price is down by more than 40%, simply because the price pattern for a new item is always such that there's always somebody who wants that first item. iPhone, anyone? So, Revisiting this question of why do people feel and complain on the forum so much about inflation is just because their scope isn't the same as us. Let's look at the system in its entirety. And there's nothing abnormal, there's nothing bad with complaining about prices. Of course, you should be complaining about prices all the time. It just gives you a little bit more perspective when you look at the whole decade of price movements. And I am actually quite proud that CCP was able, in the beginning, to create a system that's been this staple throughout the years. Of course, we had to do our twists and tweaks to get it there, but it happens because we are always trying to do better. And with you guys interacting and testing the systems, even taking it to its boundaries at times, makes it such that it becomes better every year. Now, let's go to back in time and think about some interesting events. As an example, the biggest trading day was on November 29th, 2009. It had 1.6 million transactions. That's 19 transactions per second throughout the entire day. There were 85,000 ships that changed hands. There were 76.8 billion units of titanium sold. And 20% of all of that happened in the forts, and that ratio has only been increasing. But is it a bad thing that the biggest trading day was back in 2009? Did Eve die? No. First of all, you can see that there's a fluctuation in the period, in the period until today from 2009, but also a lot of things have been taken off the market. It is actually an indicator of the health of the system because items that were previously sold by NPCs have been moved over to you guys. So the only items that are sold today are the ones that we need in order to maintain the balance of ISK in the game. We need sinks. Every time you buy a blueprint, every time you buy a skill book, you get a sink. Well, destruction. Does anyone remember this one? Yeah. 
This is actually a video. It's just a little bit laggy. Fun facts about destruction. From the beginning of time, more than 200 titles have been, de have been destroyed. Ah, that's some treat. In one single day, 1,500 battleships were destroyed in PvP. But since 2007, more than a million battleships have been destroyed. Who was given the biggest, oh, most often given the final blow? Yeah, the Drake. But this is my absolute favorite. I just have to show you this, and I take my hat off for the pilots of Iteran Mark IV. <laughs> now, if this is not hardcore PvP, I don't know what is. <laughs> now, the biggest day. Unfortunately, this doesn't show up quite as well, maybe you see. Do you see when the biggest day was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Only, only I was there, you say. Only ship value, not the modules. On O2, O, 2X, that was an expensive day. Just ship value was 1.6 trillion. Compared to Asakai, that's a lot. So, as you can see, the economic cycle continues. And what is interesting to me is how consistent the PvP battles and kills are. Between 0.2 and 0.5 trillions from 2007 and until today. That is a lot of ships that need to be renewed, which is why you guys are here, so you can understand the market better and make more money. So, back to the present. Let's look at what's happened in 2012 and 2013. Quick, re year, new, quick year in review gives us three expansions, new ships, mining changes, balancing of resources, Iterating on uh, current systems, factional warfare changes, bounty hunting, and a lots and lots of other various fixes and improvements. And the best way to look at that is to look at the GDP of EVO Online, what we call the gross user product, the value creation in EVO Online. You can see that from January 2012 and until March 2013, the uh, nominal value has increased. That's a good thing. Economy conti continues to grow. It's even grown in real terms. Even a better thing. So the econ economic engine continues to operate uh, as, as expected. With all the changes that we put out, with all the interest that you guys give us, it just keeps on going. We've even been able to keep consumer prices quite stable. Our goal is to look into what's going on whenever it's more than plus or minus 1% change every month. And these peaks that you see are around expansions. And the valley is the lull period in between, when everybody goes back and licks their wounds and tries to prepare for the next one. But you can see here that uh, it's kind of gone down these two peaks. And don't forget, our latest expansion, Retribution, has been one of the most successful expansions, if not the most su su successful expansion we had. So in terms of balancing within the year, we are quite happy. But what will happen next year? Are we going to see similar fluctuation just above the targets? or? Is it going to look like this? I will tell you a secret. <laughs> I 
there are interesting times ahead. <laughs> and I actually know more about it than you think. And you will know a lot about it this afternoon. Don't forget to attend the keynote in the afternoon. Don't have too many bees before, because you will want to know this. I think, when I, if I tell you a little bit about what I know, I think this will be the biggest changes you've seen in resource balancing, manufacturing, and anything that has to do with the gameplay that you guys attend. There are interesting times ahead. We can even say that the martini will either be shaken or stirred, which this guy will say, I don't give a damn. As long as you guys make money, you will be happy. But it will be a wild ride. And uh, talking about wild rides, uh, every time that you guys are producing something to uh, replace something that is being destroyed, stuff needs to be moved around. So what this graph shows you is the production is happening in the high sec and low sec, which are the blue, green, yellowish numbers. And uh, the destruction is happening in the red section. So stuff is moving back and forth in order to be produced in one place and destroyed in another. Back to ISK sinks and faucets, another success story for the year. If you look at this graph in, uh, in some, uh, look at the, some of the details on it, you can notice that the uh, ISK faucets are quite steady around 50 trillion ISK per month, uh, growing up towards 60 trillion towards the end of the year, which is normal because the economy was growing. What is more interesting is the bottom part, where you can see the faucets, no, sorry, the sinks, uh, increase from about 20 trillion to just above 30 trillion. So it's this area here that is quite interesting. We were able to do a fundamental shift in the way that sinks operate in EVE, where sink versus uh, faucet ratio is now up to 60% and holding. Those of you that attended last year know that I was talking about we needed more sinks. It was, we were able to do so in this year. And if you look back uh, on this graph, you can see a lot of it is coming from the uh, LP stores and also from the increase in sales of blueprints and skills. So we are able to maintain those two major sinks out of the system. So that's a good thing. And it came about with the loyalty point store change, it came about in factional warfare. And that's an interesting story to tell you. This is the Plex market since the beginning of time. It's been growing steadily with prices moving from this 300 million mark to the 500 million mark, and then this happened. Bless you. At the same time as we saw a big dip in trading of plexus, what was going on? We needed to know. Does anyone remember this? We will intervene if its stability is severely threatened. And if you look at this more closely, you can see that the prices uh, in uh, late September, or, uh, early October, were getting quite high. On a daily basis, they were above 600 million. I'm not so worried about the price in itself. It is the rapid change that is happening there. Working with, the, with, the, uh, with my team, working with the development team as well, we were able to figure out that the link was factional warfare. But the interesting part was that it wasn't ISK coming into the game. It was simply the amount of ISK they were able to earn in that period. 
what do we do? Prices are going up quite fast. It takes time to uh, make and deploy fixes. We had to use our tools. We came and intervened on the market. And as you can see, we were able to stabilize the prices. Luckily for everyone, development had already uh, made a fix and was uh, going to deploy it at a later, later time in the year. So with some uh, great work from everyone, getting that fix ready, we were able to deploy it within two weeks. And as you can see, the fixes brought prices back onto a more healthier track. This is exactly why we put out the statement last year that there might be situations where we have to intervene. We sold about 2,000 plexus during this time. Didn't need to take much. I had a lot more in stock, able to do, and, uh, do some interesting trading. So able to stabilize, tool works, and of course, all of this was communicated to the CSM uh, at the time in order to keep up with our contract that we will do this in close cooperation with the community at any given time. So what will happen here? Interesting times. Good answer. The point being that we, we will be monitoring this market even more closely in the coming year to make sure that uh, all of these balancing changes that we are expecting, and you will hear about in the uh, keynote lecture later, later on today, uh, will fall uh, correctly into place. So we will keep an extra eye after Odyssey. So the decade has taught us the system works, but monitoring is needed. Tools must be available. And as you, <coughs> excuse me, as you guys get richer, the chance of an inefficient market and an, an, an inefficient market manipulation happening at some point in the future increases. We wouldn't want to have another global financial crisis, would we? Yeah. <laughs> You're right, because there was never one. It was in another universe where we had global financial crisis. Ours is stable. The second decade. How do I see the second decade form for us, the industrialists, the traders, those who create stuff in EVE? EVE is big. So in order to understand it, we need some help. You guys are smart and you like numbers. And there's a lot of numbers, and the database just keeps growing. So I want to get some mileage out of you guys. And I think the second decade is going to be about player-driven analytics based on official data. So you guys can do the predictions. So you guys can try to understand the market and debate amongst yourselves. Some of you might ask, well, Will you not be out of a job? My answer will be very simple. If I put 10 EVE players into a room and ask them to give me an opinion on what happened, I will get 12 opinions <laughs> and probably start a war. Uh, one of the analysts uh, on the team uh, used uh, his uh, R capabilities to run uh, this uh, technical analysis of the robotics. Does anyone remember robotics and PI? What you see here is quite interesting. Yes, there was hoarding in the beginning, but the price spread very quickly uh, closed, where the prices, uh, the green and the red, 
uh, is the price change on the market. The gray line is the production cost. So you can see that very early on, the market was selling at a higher prices than, than production cost, which means that there was not an oversupply, even though there was hoarding in the beginning. This type of analysis can now be run in various different software packages. So if you guys had this data, you could be providing stuff like this. It's another one, Kaitan Systems. Sorry, I'm going to jump over that one. Or not. As you can see, the production price per unit is quite higher than the market price. This is the market price. And this was the June volume. So those of you that bought quite a bit of guidance systems around the PI changes, you are still sitting on them because they haven't all been sold and used. And prices are still below what the production cost is. An example of how balancing can sometimes not go in the, in the direction that we want it to go. An example of how important it is to understand each and every item in EVE so that we can react to it. And there are 9,000 items or so. We need a lot of brain power to understand this. And here's Plex. And I'm revealing a secret here. You can see that Plex is used every month is quite in line with what is traded, which means that the market is really quick, it's really efficient, and there's a lot of demand. So I'm expecting this to continue into the next year. And with all the changes upcoming in Odyssey, you will uh, see quite interesting time on this market as well. And Tritanium. So just imagine the wealth of information, the debates that would happen if you guys were able to work with this data directly in the future. Here you can see how uh, there is an under, uh, under supply on the market at this particular time. This is the period we talked about earlier. Trade is going down. There is, there's, a, there's a lack, and hence a lack of, uh, of, of titanium into, into the system, and hence uh, prices increased. Understanding why that happens is where you guys can provide the best information. And here you can see again, as soon as uh, the uh, trades start to increase again through, through the ore changes, through the mining changes, the prices start to decline. So the second decade, in my opinion, my humble opinion, will need more brain power. Not only because of Eve growing, but now we have a connection with dust. And those of you that attended the lecture yesterday uh, got an insight into how complex, how vast, how big, how enormous our new world will be. It will be the largest interconnected inter, uh, economy in the virtual sphere on this earth. And just continues to grow, yes. Let's give it a hand. Because we will need you. There's a lot of work ahead for you guys. And we see this happening over the next months and years to be coming online via data dumps, as we have tested in the past, and we will continue to test. But once Crest is fully online and operational, there's nothing stopping us from distributing specific type of information through that as well. This is going to be an interesting dialogue to have with the community in the next year or two while we continue to evolve into the future. And no, I'm not promising this tomorrow. And no, it is not soon TM. It's the second decade TM. Because in the end, this is all about you guys. You are the core. We know you. 
You have an average account date, so about 35 months old. Your playing session is just over three hours. You play 246 days out of the year. Eighty-four percent of you are members of a player-run corporation. A quarter of you have joined through a, a friend's corporation. Thirty-nine percent became aware of Eve through, through those friends. Fifty percent usually play solo. Fifty huh? percent usually play solo. And only 25 percent usually play in a group. Well, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There's a lot of mining, there's a lot of missions that are needed to fund all of this. Most of you are likely in an IT profession. <laughs> and you love numbers. So we know that you are the smartest. Hence, we will ut utilize your brain power in the next decade. And of course, you all look like this. <laughs> I mean, we can take it even, even further. What would stop you guys from building stuff like this? This is showing uh, people coming into EVE Online from different continents, starting in North America, moving over to West Europe. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Just imagine with all of your technology, all of your skills, what could be made. Because Eve is about the community. Eve is nothing but you. And you know best what to get for, for this community. So it's been an honor flying with you all for the past five years. I continue to enjoy each and every day. And I hope that you enjoy the lecture. In the spirit of gathering data, community feedback, and so on, there's a QR code that you can scan and answer a survey. And I will get live feedback right after the survey. Please go ahead and, and test this. And this is not a work of only just one man. If I get my team here up on stage, Edvald or Eddie, he is the guy who works uh, on EVE data and created the R chart that you saw. Lupa, our market researcher, basically providing the information where you answer uh, service to us. And thank you all for answering the service throughout the years. Kristen, a new guy on the block, joined us in September. He is the one who provides information about dust, doing dust analytics. And Kjartan, the pricing guy, who provided, provided us with all the graphs and so on uh, on prices and EVE markets. This is the team. And all I do is just to show up and smile. <laughs> so thank you all. Thank you for attending. Thank you for being in Iceland. I'll take some questions uh, right after this one. But uh, once again, love to seeing you. Love to go on the pub crawl tonight. Let's have a blast. Thanks. Hey. Thank you. Questions? Uh, there's a microphone somewhere here. Please come up to the microphone. You have four minutes for questions. Uh, the intervention for Plexus, where did the uh, stock come from? The stock came from uh, Plexus that we acquired through means. How should I put it? There are some plexus that happen to be on accounts that happen to be bound. 
So there is a, a, a circulation of plexus in the system. So the short answer is we did not create plexus. We, uh, we have a, a stock where we can buy and sell uh, on the market. We acquire it from uh, uh, permaband account, and we acquire it from uh, our own trading. This time around, we had enough. Hi, so PM Chem from Goonfleet's GARPA and Goonfleet Economic Warfare Cabal. Excuse me, you have to say it again. I didn't hear for the. Uh, so two questions from the guys back home. What's the value of total assets currently in EVE? Not ISK, but assets. And then the guidance systems chart that you sh showed, uh, do you think they're getting close to depletion or other PI goods that were stockpiled running out? Or what's going on there? Two questions. Uh, what's the total value of everything? And the other one is the guidance uh, system stockpile running out. The stockpile is getting low, but it's not empty. And maybe we'll have a dialog on that, Eddie. Do we want a dialog from Eddie on this issue? No, nah, he's not going to do it for this. You have to give him more encouragement. Do you want a dialog? <laughs> you got your dialog. Uh, the other question, what's the value of everything? Uh, we have never calculated the value of everything in the universe uh, as such. So that's another dead block for Kerton. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning, Dr. I'm Bjorn Eikli from the Knights of, Ning of the 20-Minute Alliance. I would like to ask you on a personal level, what has been during the years you've been with CCP the greatest disappointment and greatest surprise for you? during your work? My greatest disappointment throughout the years and the biggest surprise. 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 Big questions. <laughs> Big questions. My greatest disappointment has really been not being able to give you guys what you need. We had the QENs going for a couple of years. We've been trying to keep up the dev blocks, uh, but simply due to lack of time and complexity with regard to understand you guys, we've been, uh, been uh, unable to serve you to the level that I want. So that would be my greatest disappointment. And that's something I can work on, and I intend to do so in the second decade. Uh, the other question, what's been the kind of the biggest surprise? Everything. <laughs> it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, I first uh, had a, a lecture on uh, EVE back in 2004. I found the concept interesting, challenging, and quite exciting, but continued in my academic career. Three years later, they advertised for an economist, so I decided to test this, see what was going on. I understood the systems. I understood the, what they were aiming for. But I had no clue about the depth. <laughs> no clue. And that has been really exciting to see how deep it is, to see how interesting it is, and how it just is constantly evolving and changing. Thank you. I have a question about the market intervention with the Plex. How was it come to the decision that you should get involved with the Plex intervention instead of waiting to see how the players would take care of it? Because we were seeing a shortage of Plexes on the market. Uh, but what the first thing that caught our attention is that a quantity available to be traded uh, all of a sudden started to drop. And uh, we were worried that the market would not be able to interact quickly enough because the market really didn't have that information. And that's why we're seeing uh, prices increasing so, so quickly. Given the fact that uh, the balancing issue of factional warfare needs to be dealt with, uh, we had all indication of a bubble. A bubble that would rise high and then explode in our face. And that is what we did not want to happen. But it was a tough call. The reason why I ask is because with the economy supposed to be player-driven and being a sandbox, you can view the intervention as uh, tampering with the sandbox. Absolutely, absolutely. And as I said, it was a tough decision, and uh, one that we do not uh, take lightly. 
but uh, and it's a decision that I don't make on my, on my own. Uh, we sit down, we review the data, uh, we sit down with all the individuals uh, involved and uh, put forward the options. And uh, this time this was the decision. Next time we will have to do something like this. We will just go through the same process. We reviewed the process uh, with the CSM, and, and uh, if you review the meetings, meeting minutes from the last CSM meeting in, in, in December, you will uh, see a little bit more in-depth information about what type of discussion happened around the topic. But uh, the best that I know, they were satisfied with the information we were able to provide them with on, on the issue. Answers your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. How are we doing on time? Two minutes over, one last question. Sorry to have to ask one more about the intervention. You said that you used uh, Plex from band accounts or similar. Um, what will you do when that stockpile runs out in that case? I'm assuming it's not a depleting pile only, it's also growing, but what would you do if that wouldn't be sufficient? Uh, we, if we would see that we didn't have a sufficient pile, just like any other central bank does, looks at the currency reserve and makes trades to be sure that there is enough currency in reserve. I don't know if I should say that I'm sad or that I'm glad to be able to tell you that there are quite a few <laughs> that we've been able to acquire. So I'm actually not worried about this happening anytime soon. We are over time by two minutes. Apologize uh, for that one. But thank you all again for coming. I love being here. It's great to see you. Let's have fun together. <laughs>